My name is Malaika Booker and I'm a poet. I'm a poet, I'm a live art practitioner and a theatre maker. Amazing. Now, you've just won the Forward Prize for Best Individual Poem. Uh, I know that you also judge a lot of uh, poetry competitions. What do you look for in a poem when you're judging a competition? The first lot of the poems that come out of the bag are just completely terrible. They're just like anybody who wanted to write a poem, you know, your grandmother, your man on the street. When you get that first good poem, you're like, yay, bingo. The judging really starts when you get to the top of the pile, when you shortlist all the yeses. And then really, you're looking across board from those poets. So you're sitting with the, the other people who, are, who you're competing against, really. And you, you said a thing about you, you look for a poem that haunts you. Yeah, um, the poems that make it to yes are the poems that haunt me, you know, the poems that you, sometimes you forget you're judging a prize. That's the sweetness when you forget you're judging a prize and you just read or you gasp or you talk back to the poem, you know that something special is there. But Good. sometimes you get a poem and you think, God, if I'd got you in the last competition, you would have won because, mm. you know, it's kind of like who the poets are who've entered and, it's, and most of the prizes really wonderfully are anonymous. So you don't know who you're really just judging people on their poems. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that it, it, was, it was anonymous in that way. Yeah, some of them, yeah. Not the forward and stuff like that, because you're judging books, but most of the prizes, like I just judged, judged the Manchester Poetry Prize, and I don't know who the people we've shortlisted are as yet. That, that's really interesting to me. I, I also think it's really interesting that there's such a diversity of, of writing styles and the way that people will, will approach this. I know that recently a lot more spoken word artists are getting shortlisted for things or people who who may be associated more with spoken word mm -hmm. do you have any advice for people who consider themselves spoken word artists who are looking to sort of start submitting to, to page competitions well i i would give the same um, advice to people who are submitting to um, page competitions as well to page poets so so-called page poets mm -hmm. who are um thinking of going to the stage you know i would say everything is a craft everything you've got to go, you've got to know and understand the dynamics of it and kind of learn it you know you're not going to be a rock musician and then think i'm just going to enter a classical <laughs> competition you, you know you're going to you're going to retrain you're going to look at what makes a, a poem on the page what what does it do because if you're performing your poems you're not thinking about what your poems can do without an audience Mm. Vice versa, if you're thinking about what your poems do when it leaves you and you're thinking about scoring that poem on the page for the reader to actually control the reader's reading and may help them get the rhythm and be very precise in that, you're not going to know how to control and be a page on the stage. Thinking about artistry, if you're an artist, it comes with craft, whether you're a theatre maker, a playwright, if you're a playwright who knows to write monologues and decide to write dialogue, you know, you're kind of starting from scratch again. Amazing. So we're, we're all learning all the time. Oh, uh, God, yeah. Final question. Who are you, who are you reading right now? Oh, I'm reading, I'm reading um, Toon Telegon, which is like absolutely fantastic. I'm reading Derek Walcott. I'm rereading Lolly Long Soldier. And I'm reading one of my favourite writers again, Zong by M. Ubusi Phillips, who is a kind of experimental Caribbean Canadian writer who writes, who does this on the page. Talk, talk about Talk about performance on the page. Big fan, big fan. Um, and then finally, do you have a, a writing task for us? Yes, I would like you to gather five to seven items from around your house, lay them out on your desk and start, start describing them. Start describing the, the items, silver, holy, net, if you're doing a colander or something and write as much descriptions as you can about them. And then think of a topic that you've always wanted to write about and use the descriptions as kind of like an imagery base and see what happens. You know, if you want to write about police brutality or you want to write about sexuality, then use the descriptions of the colander and the strainer and the boots and the lampshade and see what happens. Just experiment and play, really.